What's up dudes, Chooch back with another video and today we're looking at the M Super X right here. This is going to be a total breakdown and review of this wheel. Uh, I'm going to tell you all my experiences after riding it for about a month and a half. I'm going to tell you all um, the tire pressure I rock in it, pretty much everything that, that I've experienced on this wheel in comparison to the Z10 and uh, just go over some questions that you all asked in the comments on several of the videos. Uh, I've taken a lot of notes on this during the time that I've been writing in my, in my field notes right here So I'll be able to give you all adequate answers on pretty much everything that I've experienced with this wheel um, Coming from the M Super V3S a lot of y'all have this wheel um, It is a huge upgrade over it. So if you're thinking about upgrading from your M Super V3S This is worth it. It absolutely is worth the two thousand dollars to upgrade um, I, th This wheel is phenomenal and I'm gonna go over the reasons why First off, the one thing I really like that several of the people didn't like um, is these angled angled pedals right here. You see how there's a good angle on these on these pedals, and there's a little bit more metal on the bottom right here, which basically it tilts these pedals up and, and gives you more of a aggressive style of riding, I think. And it, it forces your your shins into the side of the wheel right here. Instead of just having a flat foot, it's actually pushing your shins into the wheel right here, which gives you a lot more control when you're off-roading, whenever you have to you have to maybe do a little bit of a weight up to get over like a pothole or something like that. It gives you your, your, a lot more control over the wheel because it, it is pushing your, your shins into the side pads right here, and it just makes you a lot like one with the wheel, if that makes sense. And um, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I'll be honest with you, the, whenever I first got this and I rode around, I was like, man, I'm gonna be one of those people that takes a file to it and shaves it down a little bit so I get the flat pedal like these are. You see how these pedals on this thing? They're pretty much completely flat when the wheels up, like just completely level. And um, I mean, that's nice. I love my V3S, but this, it makes sense and they did it for a reason. Um, and I, I don't suggest filing it down or whatever. You, you'll like it if you give it a, a little bit of time. One thing they let you do is they let you corner sharper. So if you any of y'all out there ride, then y'all have the problem where if you're coming into a corner and you ever scrape pedals, which I know I do all the time. I even still do it on this wheel, but it's because I really, I mean, I crank down on this thing sometimes. And on this, my pedals are like, they have just completely worn down almost to like a, uh, like a, almost like a sharp edge right here on my V3S. But on this one, it, you, you can lay this thing almost 45 degree angle before you start dragging pedals which is awesome. I mean, that's a really good feature. And another thing that does is it gives you a few more inches right here. Whenever you're taking this thing down off-road trails and you have those unexpected rocks kind of sticking out the side, it's going to give you a little bit more clearance right here. I mean, just a few, that little bit of clearance can make a difference in you winding up on the ground or either you just cruising down the trail. And this thing off-road, I, I really didn't fear ever hitting one of those rocks sticking out, which I, I did a few times, but I didn't fear it quite as much as I did on this wheel. So that's one thing that I really like. Uh, the battery has a feature in some of these M Supers, depending upon where you get it from, it's gonna have a feature in it that limits, it limits it to around, like some of them are, are some people are saying 98%, some people are saying like all the way down to 92%. And it's a basically a controller, it's up here in the handle, and it keeps your battery from hitting full charge. And one thing this does is it helps you get more charge cycles out of it. So it increases the longevity of your wheel. It's not gonna be all the way full charge every single time, but the one thing that I've noticed is you're, you're never gonna really ride this thing. I mean, I, I'm not usually the person that gets on this thing and rides 45 to 50 miles at one time, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta stop, take a break, and if you're planning on doing a trip like that, the charger's not very heavy. Just throw it in your bag or whatever, and you'll be good to go. Um, you, you can fix that, though. You can, you can actually um, negate that in the charger. You can get a lot more out of it. You can get it up to like 98% if you just mess with your charger a little bit. But it, if your wheel has that diode in it, it won't let it go all the way to 100%, which I actually like that if it's going to increase my longevity of my battery. Um, another thing is there's a debate on, on this wheel the 100 volt versus the 84 volt and um, the 100 volts right now whether it be the 100 volt monster or the 100 volt M Super X like this one they are the fastest EUCs you can currently buy unless you're doing some aftermarket modifications to another unicycle 
This M Super X 100 volt and then the, the 100 volt monster are absolutely hands down the fastest electric unicyclists that they currently produce. And um, that's, of, of course, November 2018 is when I'm saying this if y'all are watching this video later on. Um, however, one thing I did notice with this wheel is the 100 volt tends to drain battery a little bit faster than the 84 volt counterpart. Um, and it, it basically the same you can ride at the same speed you can set right set the tire pressure to the exact same and um, the 100 volt is just it's going to drain the battery faster so if you're worried about getting a long battery life I say shoot for the 84 volt um, M Super X with the 1600 watt hour battery if you want something that's a little bit more lightweight that's a lot faster um, go for the 100 volt. The 100 volt, this wheel is fast. I'm telling you that it is incredibly fast for a one wheel vehicle. It is it is insane, um, but it will drain your battery a little bit faster. Um, I, I did a 30 mile per hour ride and I, I went all the way to 20 percent on this thing. I got rode it. Um, it was a 469 foot elevation gain on my ride. 45 miles round trip and it, I brought it down to a 20% battery and, you, and I'm not the person that's going to sit there and try to get everything out of the wheel. I'm not going to ride it at 20%, below 20% battery on a Gatway because it's, it's going to be really slow. So I mean, that was coming back to the house and luckily I made it back to the house and I had like probably like 17% battery left and um, that's, that's a, I mean, for me 45 miles riding at about 30 miles per hour, like, I mean, that's cruise and I pumped the tire up before I went because it was an on-road ride I pumped the tire up a lot just so I could get more range out of it um, but if you if you ride this thing from full charge they completely dead even on the 1230 watt hour and you're conservative and you're not going completely full take all the way at the beeper you can you could probably squeeze 50 miles out of this wheel and that's I mean and it, it wouldn't hardly be a problem for it but you'd have to you'd have to have the tire pumped up you'd have to be on rather flat ground and not all the way on the beeper um, th this wheel it handles very well. It is perfect at, at commuting. It, it's like my favorite commuter wheel by far. This right here used to be my V3S was my, one of my favorite commuter wheels, just because I mean the, the bigger tire you could really cruise on it. It would just maintain the speed. Um, but this one right here, having that slightly bigger tire, this one inch is the difference on this thing as of the tire. But you, the bumps that I hit on this on my daily commute. I mean, you'd have to really like bend your legs, you know what I mean? You're going over like a, a dip or a pothole or whatever, and you'd feel it on an 18 inch wheel. For some reason on this, even though it's only a one inch difference, this thing really, really handles bumps, potholes, all that stuff that you may not be expecting a lot better, and it just cruises, man. This thing is like, I don't even know, it's like Cadillac, Rolls Royce, whatever you want to compare it to. This thing cruises. And um, let's see, what else in here? The, the the one thing I like about, the one thing that keeps me from buying the Monster, everybody, the people that, that have the Monster, they love it, but for, for my style, I have to have something that's not going to stand out like a sore thumb, you know what I mean? Whether I'm going into work, whether I'm going into like a, uh, in, into my, into campus, whether I, I be going into a, a coffee shop, anything like that, you really want to, you really want to have something that's not going to stand out like a sore thumb and, and really put people off, you know what I mean? With this, it's still, like, I still get people to ask me, like, why I'm pushing a suitcase around when everything's folded up, you know what I mean? People really are naive, but if you have the the 100 volt monster, that thing is just, like, you try to take that on public transport, you know what I mean? You try to take it into the grocery store, people might start looking at you weird and start, like, trying to kick you out or say something. So, one thing that, I mean, it, it's a fast wheel, it's an excellent commuter, and it still keeps the form factor that's not going to stick out like a sore thumb and maybe get you in trouble, you know what I mean? So that's one thing I really like about it. Um, the trolley handle on this wheel, I've had no problems with it. Um, it, it. It doesn't slide out. One thing that people do to their trolley handles is they try to lube them up and make them slide out a lot better and I don't recommend doing that because if you do crash, it's going to pop out and if you have one of the things where the wheel goes wild or whatever, it's this thing's going to come sliding out and it's going to bend it. So. As it comes, don't try to lube it up or anything like that. Just keep it the way it is. And the trolley handle is sturdy. It works well. It doesn't feel like it's going to bend or anything like that. And um, one thing that actually happened with it, you see it on the back of this thing. I had, I took it over to the zoo. 
had to go over there for some anthropology work and basically the zoo guy, I, I called him up and asked him, I was like, hey, I said, I'm riding over there on an electric unicycle. I said, it's, it's kind of a weird thing or whatever, but may I please put it behind the desk or something, you know what I mean? While I'm go going into, we had to do like a primate thing and like, I don't even know. But I get up there and the guy, I, I tell him I had the handle out like this. I was like, yeah, don't pick it up by that. I don't know if he didn't hear me or what. But the dude literally grabs the wheel by this handle and just drags it like sideways. I stopped him, but he got it. He just literally picked it all the way up. He had this thing picked all the way up off the ground, just holding it by this handle. And it's only two screws holding this thing in right here. I mean, it's actually it's four screws, one in the front, one in the back. These are tiny screws. And I thought the handle was going to break. You know what I mean? I thought this thing was done for. It probably wouldn't slide back in or anything after that. But it, it, it's all good. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't break or anything, which kind of, it really impressed me. So, and it slides in. I just got it on this stand. I just don't want to push it down a little bit harder. But um, that's one thing that I really noticed. I was like, dude, that handle is about to break off of that thing. And it was, it was fine. So, um... The stock tire is incredible. This, this, you can see the difference in the tires. I'll show you right here. The stock tire on this this wheel is absolutely incredible for on road, but it's it's not as good off road as the M Super V3S tire. You can see the V3S tire is kind of an aggressive kind of off road style, like on road tread. But um, this they made the uh, M Super X tire pretty much strictly as an on road tire. You see that how it's just you have a little bit of deflection in here for maybe when it's wet or whatever but this is strictly pretty much made for on road and I, i've ridden it off road a good bit but if you hit some mud on this on this wheel i'm telling you you got to be careful because it you're going to start spinning you know what i mean like like as if you're on a two-stroke motorcycle and you hit it hit the gas in the mud you're going to start spinning i mean and i've ridden out some crazy spins in the mud on this thing and luckily i rode them out but <laughs> It does not get as much traction as the V3S tire. So if you want to change the tire for off-roading or whatever, I suggest doing it. One thing I did is just let some air out whenever I went off-roading, and that pretty much worked worked for me. And I'm just going to, I'm going to keep this same tire on here, off-roading, whatever. You know what I mean? It adds a little bit of fun to it, if you ask me, whenever you're slipping and sliding in the mud. But that's just me. Um, another thing in here. Some, some, some people have said that the acceleration and torque from a complete stop, like if you're basically jumping off the line on a uh, red light or something like that on this wheel, some people have said that, the, that they can actually get this thing to beat. You know what I mean? Like as if you're going top speed, they, can, they say leaning into it and torquing out of like a, a red light or whatever, they can actually get the thing to beat. And one thing that, that kind of scares people in that is they think it's gonna probably shut off on them. But I can assure you, if you're if, if you're under a 250 pound rider and you're hard accelerating on this thing, you're not gonna get a shut off. It's, it, it's, you're, it's not gonna happen. You can lean as hard as you want to into this thing. You could have two blocks on this thing. You push your legs against and took off. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna shut off on you. The people that have heard beeps, I don't know what they're doing because I've, I've actually tried it and I've gone from a complete stop with my tire pressure a little bit low so I wouldn't get a spin and I just tried to hammer it out of like a, a red light from a solid stop and I had to you know what I mean because I, I pulled up next to like a dead gum a full line of traffic and I had to keep up with it you know what I mean I couldn't be just lollygagging or whatever because I pulled up ahead of them and I had to really hammer it down to take off. And I was on probably a, a road in here in Denver where the speed limit is 45 miles per hour. And I just hammered this thing down and I was out in front of all the cars, you know what I mean? I had no problems with it beeping on me or anything like that. And uh, you, I mean, this thing, the 100 volt, it, it says on, on the E-Wheels website that you, the top speed's around 35 miles an hour. But that's for the 84 volt M Super. The, the 84 volt M Super for some people out there, I, I'd say around 35 to 36 mile per hour is what you're going to get out of the 84 volt. But this 100 volt right here, if you're up on five bars or four bars of charge, shows right here on the back of the light how many bars you have. I usually look at that as my indicator. But if you're on four or five bars of battery and you hammer this thing down, you're going to get it past 40 miles per hour. If you're, I mean, I, I can get it to 43, 42 consistently on this thing. And I mean, it's no joke. Going 43 miles per hour on one wheel, it is 
exhilarating and it is so much fun and it never gets old. It's, I absolutely, I love it. This wheel is so fast. And that's one of the huge selling points on it. For it, its size, it is a powerhouse, I'll tell you that. Um, one, one thing that this wheel will give you over, say like a 16 inch wheel, like the King Song 16 or say, uh, like even the V3S is I think this wheel is honestly the safest wheel they've ever made simply due to the fact that you have that acceleration if, if something's going on and you have to get around the car that's maybe pulling out in front of you if you're riding down the right hand lane and you see a guy taking a corner you can accelerate over the left hand lane and get over there quick you know what I mean even even the cruising 30 miles per hour on this thing you still got almost 10 miles per hour to go you know what I mean you got like you can just hammer down and get out of the way of something and also on the contrary to that the brakes on this thing are phenomenal you can literally I have come up to some intersections before where I just, red lights popped on me you know what I mean I'm not gonna go flying through a, a yellow light and risk getting run over by a truck or anything like that so man I'll come up and I just crank back on this thing you can I mean you can go from 36 miles an hour to dead stop I say on this thing probably honestly from here to the other side of the room which would be I'd say for me I hard braking probably 45 to 50 feet you know what I mean and that's that's going I mean that's on one wheel that's with no disc brakes or anything like that and that's just using the motor power to brake and, and don't worry that you're gonna overpower this thing on the braking stuff I mean I've been coming down some hills in the Rocky Mountains where I've just lean back on this thing crank back and it it's I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about any MOSFETs blowing I'm not worried about the capacitors or anything like that I feel like this wheel can handle it you know what I mean especially for a rider that's under 200 pounds do, do, just don't worry about the brakes on it if you got a, if you got a hammer down on the brakes hammer down on the brakes this thing will stop it absolutely will it handles hills like no other wheel there is you know what I mean and I, I took it up to some some Rocky Mountain Hills where it's literally it's like these mountain passes Lookout Mountain was one of them um, another one was up near Blackhawk y'all saw that video and I didn't put in the whole ride up that mountain I, I started at the base of that hill and I probably climbed 2,000 feet in elevation I lit it from the start of that hill all the way up to where I was up in the peaks of the mountains it was a steady climb this thing rode at, I, I didn't of course take it up to like 30 miles an hour up the hill I was keeping it about 20 miles per hour just steady climbing and, and pretty it was pretty high heat too out there that day and it had no problem it literally just trucked right up that mountain it never overheated and I never dismounted I rode it pretty much until the battery was dead that day and up some gnarly hills down some gnarly hills and I had no problems with it um, compared to the Z10 Turning, I'd say it's much more natural for any of y'all coming from any of the King Song series, the Rock Wheel series, the In Motions, the Solo Wheels, um, older guy ways, Nine Bots, or the the, the E Plus. It's going to be a lot more natural. Getting on this wheel is not going to it's not going to be any type of learning curve, any type of anything new. The only thing is may be a little bit different for you is the the curved pedals. You know what I mean? The the, the slightly angled pedals. That's the only thing that's going to mess with your head a little bit when you first get it. Um, so for see and, and the thing is I like this wheel and it was more natural for me because I, I put in here people under 150 pounds uh, that that fat tire on that Z10 was like I mean it would just bounce me around everywhere you know what I mean I could control it fine and I, I rode the hell out of that wheel but that that fat tire on there if you hit any bumps or anything like that even cornering in the streets it was it was almost like it was you had to use so much more core strength you know what I mean and you all these unicycles are all about core strength but that Z10 man like it was like an ab workout every time I rode that thing and riding it off-road and riding it fast and everything which isn't a bad thing it was a, a I mean it's a phenomenal wheel I love it and I'd love to have a production model of it but um, the Z10 honestly for me just having that little bit extra weight of the Z10 and that bigger tire it just made the riding experience a little bit harder you know what I mean for navigating trails, for navigating tight corners, for doing one one footed tricks, for doing all that stuff that I've become natural on these thinner thinner tired wheels to do. Um, another thing is the side pads that the e wheels are shipping out now. You see right here, these are the new side pads. 
and I just stuck them over the top of the old side pads and I just glued them on here just so I'd have more uh, more beef to my side pads. You know, I, mean? I didn't want to take the old ones off. I just wanted to add to it so I'd have a little bit more girth on these side pads. But the ones that we're shipping these these um, e, these M Super X's with now from E Wheels, they will come with these thicker side pads on here. And these are very nice. They they I mean, it's plenty to grip with. The um, the jumping on here, I, I'll say jumping because I I'm a knife guy. Uh, this right here is great i mean this grips your jeans it grips everything right here perfectly just these these little bumps in here it really helps with with being able to grab the wheel i mean and it it's very effective these side pads are great once you get used to them a little bit they're great one thing it does do though is on your leg right here and I, since i started riding unicycles i haven't had any hair on my leg in this one spot it just stays worn off <laughs> and i've gotten like a like almost like a callus right here on my leg from riding so much but that's uh, it, it, when you start riding this thing, of course, you're gonna get a little bit of a red spot right there, but after about a week of riding, your, your leg will get used to it. Um, and that's it, I mean, just because I ride it off-road, I mean, I'm on this thing like every day, all day, you know what I mean, whenever I, because I, I, I ride it all, everywhere. I actually, I went to go get, use my truck to go snowboarding the other day, and the battery was dead in it because I've literally been riding these things everywhere. Like, I literally, if I got to go somewhere and it's 40 miles away, I will try to ride my unicycle there and I'll stop and eat somewhere and charge the thing up, you know what I mean, if I have to, which honestly is crazy, but I love riding them so much that whether it be cold, whether it be snow, whether it be rain, I'm on this thing riding. Um, let's see here. The, the, the front light on this thing is very, very bright. And I'll go ahead and pull this thing off this stand. So we don't have this thing take off at 100 miles an hour trying to fly into the ball. The front light on this thing, guys, look at this. It's very, very bright. So you can see that compared to the uh, V3S Plus, this thing, it gives you a peace of mind at night. If you're out there stuck, especially with the time change and getting dark at 5 o'clock, this thing really, really, it's, you can see right there on my hand, it's, it's quite the light. And it, it will light your path, you know what I mean? I suggest having like a backup flashlight or something always with you i mean I always carry one right on my side but if you're in a bad situation and you do get stuck out at night this light will it will let people know where you're at and it'll let you see the path in front of you which is great and another thing i really like on this wheel that a lot of people really didn't like too much is the rgb lights on here and though i don't like it in the normal mode what i do if i want to be seen at night this is what i ride with i put it on the flashing mode right here and then you got flashers on the on the sides, and you got flashers on the back right here, and it, you can really see these RGB lights very well at night, and it lets you be seen by cars, and um, it, it's a, it's a great safety feature, honestly. I, anytime I'm riding at night, that's pretty much the way I ride with it. And if I'm trying to ride down and actually see if I'm not in, in the city where it's well lit, then I'll uh, just go ahead and throw the light on, and then I'll have the RGBs flashing. You see. That's the way I'll ride like that. So you got the headlight and then you still got flashing lights. And you can just cycle through it just by pressing the button lightly on top. And you don't even have to open the app, which is pretty cool. Um, on the back right here, you do have, I love the green. I love how they put the green blinkers in and, and indicator lights right there. So you got your, your, your blinkers like the old V3S, which is very cool. I always use hand signals whenever you're turning. There's no reason not to use hand signals on, on an electric unicycle. Your hands are free. Whatever you're riding, always signal. You know what I mean? Because people people don't understand these things and just let people know where you're going, it helps. You know what I mean? I point this way, I point, and you got this other arm free. You don't have a throttle hand. So the people that don't understand hand signals, like motorcycle hand signals, they don't understand what this means, you can just point that way or you could just point that way. You know what I mean? And that's one thing I really like about unicycles is both hands are free, which is a safety feature in my mind because you can actually use both hands as your blinkers. And um, let's see right here. So Z10 or M Super X? I've gotten that question a whole bunch on, on the comments. And honestly, what I have to say after trying both on and off road, riding them a good bit, I rode the hell out of that uh, Z10 whenever I had it. I rode it on every bit of terrain that I've ridden this on, and 
I have to say I like the M Super X a little bit more. Not to say I don't like the Z10 at all. And I absolutely love the Z10, but I do, I like the M Super X just a little bit more. And I'll tell you why right here. It's, it's much faster by a long shot. The 100 volt is much faster than the Z10 by a long shot. And it's, so the Z10, you can get 28 to 30 miles per hour on. I was, I was hitting like on dark spot, like 30 miles per hour on, on my Z10. And that was when the tire was fully pumped up. I took air out of it and I was hitting like, like 27 on it. So the thing is with this, this 100 volt is just, it launches, man. And it will keep consistent speed for your whole commute. I mean, you can ride this thing top kicking over 35 miles per hour, no problem. Um, the 19 inch wheel is a huge advantage. You know how the, the Z10 had the fat tire, but it was still an 18 inch wheel. But the larger diameter of this, it offers a, a much smoother ride. And I already kind of went over this a little bit. But the same bumps and everything like that on my standard commute, even with the Z10, this thing handles them better. You know what I mean? The Z10 was like a special wheel for riding in like sand, for riding through mud, for riding through stuff like that, where um, a thinner wheel would kind of like sink into the whatever terrain you're riding on. And so the only advantage I really see the Z10 having is for you, you guys that want to ride on the beach, you guys that want to ride on some trails maybe with uh, softer mud, softer sand, stuff like that. Uh, it, it really, that's the only thing I can see with the Z10 tire that it benefits. I mean, that's really the only thing that, it, that, that w was beneficial to that wheel for me. Um, let's see, the larger, just the little bit larger diameter of this wheel, you're pushing the size of most car tires on this wheel. So if you think about it, um, what most car tires are what, 20 inches, the rims are 17 inches, and then the car tires like 20 inches. So this right here, Technically speaking, if you're riding on the roadway, if you're riding on, on any type of high, like highway road, side shoulder of any type of road like that, and you come across a pothole, the same potholes that would be naturally in the road that they're not going to fix, you know what I mean, the state's not going to fix, this wheel will handle it because other cars are, are able to handle those potholes. The other diameter of, of, of the standard uh, um, car that's driving around, you know what I mean, your, your Honda Civics, your, your Toyota, stuff like that, this is the same size wheel of it. So, I mean, it's going to handle those bumps the same as a car would handle it. You know what I mean? You just don't have four of them. So, that's one thing to think about. All right, so the charge time to this thing I wrote down here, the charge time to 80%. I just wrote to 80% because that's what my, most people want to know. Uh, if you're going from zero to 80%, it's four hours with the quick charger that comes in the pack, which is incredible. I mean, it literally seems like a snap and this thing's charged up. The M Super X without, or I mean, this M Super V3S, with that standard charger, that just um, the standard brick charger without the fans in it, the fast charger, um, this thing would take up to like six and a half to seven hours to reach 80%. So it does charge a lot faster um, with, with the rapid charger that is included when you get it from e -Wheels. And so the, the average ride time I can get out of this, because some people would rather know the ride time you can get as opposed to the mileage, um, you can get about two and a half to three hours of just everyday riding, whether it be stop and go traffic, city commuting, fast pace, whatever it is, I've got about two and a half to three hours out of, out of every charge, you know what I mean? And that's not going all the way to dead, that's going to about 20% is the lowest I go on. So um, that, that's riding with a rather pumped up tire as well on, on concrete. If you're riding off-road, expect to get a little bit less if you're doing some challenging hills and stuff like that. Expect around two hours of ride time if you're doing off-road type stuff. Um, Another huge thing about this wheel is out of all the unicycles that they've ever produced, whether it be from any company, any, whether it be Gotway, Ninebot, whether it be Solo Wheel, whatever, this wheel from the production date has had the least amount of problems reported by the community, hands down. It, it, whenever the V3S launched, whenever um, the ACMs launched, whenever um, even, even the E Pluses launched, there was there was a good bit of problems and it's all working out kinks and stuff but I think Gotway nailed it with this wheel and there's been no reported issues of any type of weird oscillation no cutoffs nothing like that it's the only thing that I've seen on this wheel where people crash is just because they're going way too fast on it and because it is such a fast wheel that's the only issue that I've seen you know what I mean is people is brighter area you know what I mean just and it it could happen to anybody it absolutely could so just got to be safe on this wheel 
but there's been no report, no problems with motherboards doing any any type of weird stuff. Um, there's been there's been no problems with the motor. There's been no problems with with any of the the lighting on it. The case is solid on this thing. There's no problems with the the screws um, breaking off in, in the casing or anything like that. They back them with metal metal backing in each one of the screw heads, and so there's been no problems with that. There. The least reported problem of any wheel, and I look at the Facebook groups, I look at the forums, everything like that, and it really seems like this wheel has been stellar since the launch date. Um, tomorrow, I'm putting this video up November 14th right now of 2018, so tomorrow, November 15th, they are getting a new, a full new shipment into e-wheels, guys, and this is your time to get one, because these, these things are selling like hotcakes, so... Go ahead, go on the website if you want one of these things and go ahead and place your order as soon as you can because right now uh, eWheels is offering a free seat. You can get a, a completely, a, this thing completely free and a set of wrist guards and this seat and the wrist guards would be like a $100 value. So if you place your order now, I don't know how long this is going to be going on for. Uh, if you can go ahead and get it in, you will get the free seat and you can pick wrist guards or I think elbow pads. Whichever one you want, I say wrist guard. Wrist guards are the best, the best thing you can get for riding one of these things besides a helmet. Um, but go ahead and get them because we're getting a new shipment in tomorrow, and um, they're they're predicted to sell fast. Uh, this wheel has a 2,000 uh, 2,000 watt motor in it. Um, it's 21.5 inches tall from from the bottom of the wheel to the to the very top without this seat on here. 21.5 inches. It's nine and a half inches wide. And the tire is 19 inches by 3 inches wide. Um, one thing in this wheel that is a huge step up over the V3S is there's better cooling due to there's there's new MOSFETs in it. They're called T0247 MOSFETs, and that they, they, they dissipate heat a lot more effectively than these. Uh, some people in the summertime with the V3S had problems with the wires actually like overheating in there, and the MOSFETs getting really hot. And reading some gnarly temperatures out of this thing, but um, these are these MOSFETs in here are set to withstand two times the amount of, of sustained power over the V3S, and uh, the wires on on this one are actually and the motherboard wires. So you have three motor wires coming out, and those are your your high conductor wires. I mean, those things are just pulling power. You know what I mean? Those things are are expected to get hot. They're expected to, to to be delivering pretty much all your power and they have to be safe, you know what I mean? They have to be reliable wires, those three wires coming out of the motor. And some people on the V3S had issues with it. I've never had a problem with it, but the V3S wires are actually just soldered into the motherboard. So it's literally just a solder tack and the wire just sticks down and has solder around it and that's the way that those wires are held on. But inside this motherboard, it actually has screw-in points. So literally it's like the connectors, if you have to do any type of maintenance or anything like that, the connectors actually screw into the motherboard. Like you can unscrew them if one wire goes bad, you can unscrew that bad boy and replace it. You know what I mean? You don't have to go through the whole shenanigans of getting a whole new motherboard, clipping the wires, because with this one, I, actually I did have to do that one time. I had to go in and clip the wires and put on new connectors and stuff in there. And it's a lot easier if you have... Uh, connectors you can just unscrew from the motherboard as opposed to just being soldered directly into it and um, it, it, it offers a lot less resistance and it, because it has that better connector it's all copper connectors it screws into has a lot better resistance um, basically going into the connector interface so that's it's a huge advantage and the internals of this thing are really what makes people want to buy it and upgrade from the V3S so that's, that's a good thing about it Max rider weight on this thing is the exact same as the Z10. 325 pound rider can get on this bad boy and go. So don't don't be afraid if, if you're a bigger guy on this thing and you're, you're weary about getting a unicycle. This thing has the power to handle it, and the, the the pedals on it are robust enough to handle the weight. 325 pounds. So um, the 100 volt one expect to go over 40 miles per hour, and with the 84 volt expect around 36 miles per hour. Uh, the 1600 watt watt hour wheel is about 52 pounds, and the 1230 watt hour wheel is about 48 pounds, and it is a noticeable noticeable difference. I mean, really, it is. This this bad boy has the 1300 watt hour batteries in it. And this has the 1230 watt hour batteries in it, 
And just even though this is a bigger wheel, this wheel feels a little bit lighter. So if you want something a little bit more nimble, lighter, whatever, I'd say go with the 1230 watt hour. I haven't had any problems with getting stranded out or anything. If I know I'm going on a long ride, I usually just take my charger in the backpack. Um, so this is where we get into the specs, and this is really why I'm going to show you why this wheel, in my mind, and why it is better than the Z10, you know what I mean, and why I like it more. The Z10 motor is 800, 1800 watt uh, motor, and so that's 200 watts less than this motor. Um, the Z10, get this guys, is only a 59 volt machine. Um, there, I mean, there's old, old like the old first production Gateway ACM was actually a 62 volt machine. So uh, it's that's kind of low on the voltage for, for honestly, because the M Super X has an 84 volt um, option and it also has a 100 volt option. So with if you go with the 100 volt option M Super X, you're literally getting almost 40 more watts out of this thing, or 40, 40 more volts out of this thing than the Z10. I mean, you think about that. That's that's significant. Uh, 59 as opposed to 100 volts. That's a, that's a huge step up. Um, so, in conclusion, I know it's a long video, guys, but the M Super X is my favorite wheel. Uh, by, out of all the wheels I have, out of the over the Z10, everything like that, it's very stable. It has more than enough range, even with the 1230 watt hour battery, and the speed and power will make you smile ear to ear every time you get on this thing. It really, I mean, it's like I, it, it's incredible to me that you can have something that just leans up by the door that is this low maintenance and is this much fun. It is absolutely, it's a dream come true, honestly, for someone like me. And it, every time I get on this thing, I, I, I'm just smiling ear to ear. It's a blast. So that's my conclusion on it, guys. The M Super X, I highly, highly suggest the wheel. And um, new shipment coming in tomorrow, guys. So if y'all want one, go ahead and and go on the website and put put your order in. Uh, link's gonna be below, guys. Um, if if y'all want one, it is no more cost to you, and it gives me a small little kickback on, on any sale that comes out of that link below. And I really appreciate it, guys. If, if y'all looking into a unicycle, it really helps me out, and honestly, it means the world to me. So I really appreciate y'all watching. If there's any more questions, throw them down in the comments, and I'll be sure to reply to them as fast as possible. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.